Many years ago, we built lithium batteries for electric sailboat and we showed you guys how we did that. All of that information is completely obsolete now because everything has changed. So we're gonna show you guys how to build lithium batteries with the materials that are available now. So we're gonna be building them a bit differently from the way we built them for the boat. So on the boat, we used cylindrical cells. Now we got these big rectangular buggers that are so much easier to use. The second huge difference is we're going to make them waterproof because these are batteries that go in a boat. So we're gonna show you guys how to build waterproof lithium iron phosphate batteries the easiest way possible. The materials you guys are gonna to need to build the battery are very simple. You have a rubber sheet, which comes as a roll, Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 millimeter box wrench, and a 9 16 box wrench, some really strong scissors, a knife, some really, really gnarly wire cutters, 5 16 six gauge lugs, and then in the red size, you're gonna need quarter inch heat shrink connectors, captain tape, a hydraulic press, some terminals, a battery fuse, black and red heat shrink tubing, the lithium batteries themselves, a power supply, 5200, the BMS. And last but not least, the Pelican case itself. For this build, we're gonna be using the IM2100. It's pretty much a drop-in replacement for a battery. So this guy, its exterior dimensions are 13 by 9.2 by six. So it's pretty darn close to being a Group 31 battery. A very, very important piece of information for you guys. Do not do anything that will start a fire because a lithium cell will not ever be extinguished. It's just going to burn until it decides that it has consumed all of its fuel. If you put it underwater, it will burn underwater. If you have a fire extinguisher, it will laugh at it. Don't do anything that'll start a fire because you can't put it out. For battery builds, I like to work on a rubber mat for a couple reasons. One, it does not conduct electricity. Two, it doesn't slip. So if you put something and then you accidentally bump into it, it's not gonna slide and fall and break and get damaged. Second thing, you should take off your rings because uh, they can arc and then they will burst into fire and you'll be burned with it. So watches, rings, all that kind of stuff, you wanna take them off. Now my Masonic ring doesn't come off because it's been on my finger for so many years, my finger has gotten bigger and it physically can't come off. So. That one will just stay, and I'm just very careful when I'm working with electricity around it. That way, I don't get fried. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a very, very brief demonstration of parallel versus series connections of a battery cell. Now, in parallel, the voltage stays the same, but the amperage increases. In series, the amperage stays the same, but the voltage increases. So for simplified math, we're going to say that each cell gives you 3 volts, gives a little more than that, we're just going to go with 3 volts, 100 amp hours. So in this situation, you have a 3 volt battery, but the amperage increases. So 100, 200, 300, 400 amp hours. So you have here a 3 volt, 400 amp hour battery. In the same situation, the same exact cells, you have 100 amp hours because it's in series, so the amperage doesn't increase, but the voltage does increase. So it goes 3 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts. 12 volts. So you have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So the easiest way to remember how to not mess things up when you're connecting a battery is that the voltage has to flow through a battery. It can't go from pole to pole. If it goes from pole to pole, it will explode. So always go positive through the battery to negative, negative to positive, through the battery to negative, negative to positive through the battery to the other side, like that, you get the picture. Now, when you're reading about lithium batteries, you're gonna see a lot of weird numbers and letters. And what they're talking about is series and parallel. So this, for example, would be a 4S1P battery build. So that makes a 12 volt battery and it's four battery cells in series, one each in parallel. This, for example, would be a 1S, 4P battery because you have one series and you have four cells in parallel. So the battery we're going to be building is going to be a 12 volt battery, but 200 amps. So that's going to be a 4S 2P battery because it'll be four groups in series, but then each group is made up of two cells in parallel. So in this situation, you now see that if we hook these two up in parallel, 
and these two up in parallel, and these two up in parallel, and these two up in parallel, what we're going to have are four groups of 200 amp hours, but still three volts each. Now, when we connect this positive group to this negative group, and this positive to this negative, and this positive to this negative, there the voltage adds in series. So we've increased amperage and voltage. So that's how we're going to create a 4S 2P battery. So you can see here, the cells do fit inside and the lid closes, so we're all good there. But we have a couple problems. We need to also fit the BMS and we have to fit the poles to the batteries. So it's not going to fit. So we have to figure another way to set them up. Now, one other issue with this kind of setup in the battery box is it provides no compression. Now, when we built the batteries for the boat, we used cylindrical cells instead of this kind, which is called a prismatic cell. Now, one of the biggest differences in the cells is based on geometry. This is not a cylinder. That's where cylindrical cells get their name from. Cylindrical cells are a metal tube and they don't need any external compression because when the pressures happen inside the cell, their shape can take the pressure. So therefore they don't have any issues with expansion. This guy has a nice big fat broad side that will puff out like a balloon if you charge this guy without compressing him. So when you build the setup, it needs to be really, really tight. So there's ways to make external compression systems for these using wood on each side and then some threaded rods that you just crank together and lock this thing up that works really well but it doesn't fit inside the battery box so what we're going to be doing is using the battery box itself because the internal dimensions are so tight that that will provide the compression that we need to keep this all under pressure and that way the cells don't swell now if your cells swell they still work, it's just very dangerous because the next thing they can do is just burst into flames. So that's not very good. You don't want to have that happen. But a little swelling is, eh, it's okay. It just means that the cell won't last as long as it could have if it were properly compressed and then uh, didn't swell. Now, if you compress them well, they'll give you about 5,000 cycles. If you don't compress your cells, they'll give you less, like three to 4,000 cycles which is still a ton of lifespan from the battery. So if for whatever reason, the way you build your battery, if you can't get the perfect compression on them, and it doesn't take much compression, it's just a little bit. If you can't get the perfect compression, have some, just have something and you'll be good enough. It'll be better than no compression at all. And there are people who do build the batteries and use them for a really long time with zero compression because the problem with compression, as you can imagine, is airflow. And these cells can get hot. They don't get that hot. So the people who do that, where they leave spaces between the cells for airflow, it's kind of overkill because you don't have to do that and they will work just fine and they don't overheat. So my point is, if people don't give them compression for the reasons of airflow and they do just fine, then you're going to be fine by doing any form of compression, which would be better than no compression. And they're doing fine so you'll do fine. So this is how we're going to arrange the cells inside the case. We're gonna have the positive terminal here and the negative terminal here. These are gonna be hooked up in parallel and so will these and so will these and so will these. But then we're going to connect this part in series, this part in series, and this part in series. So power comes in here, here's the positive, runs through these cells, goes to the negative, up to here, through these to the negative, across to the positive, through these cells, to the negative, down to the positive, through these cells, to the negative, and then out. That's how the electricity is gonna flow through this battery. And if you set it up like that, it won't cause a short circuit and it won't explode, which is a plus. Now, once this is all set up, we then need to put pressure on this and then top balance them. Now, you guys all know that on a boat, stuff jiggles around a lot. What we're gonna do is we're going to put sheets of rubber between everything. We're just gonna cover all of it with rubber, have them completely isolated and insulated, and the rubber helps transmit the forces to keep the compression on all of the cells. So let's get these stacked up with rubber.
Now to insulate the sides between these guys, we're going to slip this piece of rubber in here as well. And then we're going to scooch them on over there. Scooty, scooty. So this stuff is called Captain Tape. It's the gold tape you see on fancy electronic stuff. It's supposed to be non-conductive, but I still put rubber between things anyway, just because I don't want to run any risks at all. Okay, our next step in this process is going to be to put on the terminals. So to make things simple, what I like to do is always start with the most basic setup. So we're gonna set up all the parallels first. After we have the parallels set up, then we'll set up the series connections. So the parallels are gonna be here and here, as well as here, 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 and here. So pretty much going to group them into the parallel groups that they're going to be. Okay, now that we have this first set set up in parallel, we're gonna do the next one. Now, a really, really important thing. When you're doing this, you always wanna do the highest one first. So always consider gravity in your situation. If we attach the first screw on the bottom and then we let go to put the top one on. When we let go, what if this guy spins and comes down and makes contact down here? In this situation, we are going to be hooking this one to this one. So that wouldn't be a bad thing. But if we have that hooked up and then this one does it as well, we just made a short circuit and stuff can explode. So that would be really, really, really bad. So don't do that. Always start on the top and let gravity hold your pieces until you're ready to finally put them in. Okay, so here we have them set up in parallel groups. So you can see these two are in parallel, these two are in parallel, these two are in parallel, and these two are in parallel. Now to confirm that, we can hook up a voltmeter. And if we go here, positive to negative, we have 3.3 volts. And then down here, positive and negative, 3.3, positive and negative, all right, and positive and negative. Now, if I go, say, from here to here, it's zero, because they're not connected yet. 3.3 volts there, but then if we go from here to here, we're going to have 6.6 .6 volts. So what happens is we have 3.3 adding with this 3.3. So even though we have four cells set up, it's still a 6 volt battery because it's you know 3 volts and 3 volts. 200 amp hours, but still 6 volt. So now we're going to hook up these two and then these two. And then that'll give us the 3, 6, 9, and 12 volt battery that we're looking for. 3.3 volts, 6.6 .6 volts, 9.9 .9 volts, and 13.5 volts. So imagine that the blue dots are what give power, just for oversimplification. So this is still only one blue dot between here and here. So we go 3.3, still 3.3. You get one blue dot, two blue dots. Now you have 6.6. .6. So when you're doing your connections, even though something says it's positive or it's negative, this whole bar can technically be viewed as the positive side from this battery, uh, from this pole here. But it'd be the negative side from this one over here because it's on the same side of those blue dots. It's great. Technically, you now have a 12 volt battery that is 200 amp hours. But the problem is, you don't really have a safe battery that's 200 amp hours yet because there's no controls hooked up to this thing. This is just a bucket of power just sitting here. Now, to make it safe, we're going to now hook up the BMS, which is the thing that balances, monitors, and most importantly, shuts this thing down if anything gets near a direction that is heading towards something bad. So all these different parameters are all there to keep this thing safe. That way it doesn't explode on you. But the problem is, none of that's hooked up yet. So we're gonna get all that hooked up, and then we're gonna top balance it. 
Now, each of those topics merits its own video, which is exactly what we did for you guys. So if you click the link right up here, it'll take you to the first video, which is setting up the BMS. After that, it's gonna take you to another video for top balancing the battery. After you're done top balancing, there's gonna be a link again, right in the same little spot that'll bring you right back here. Now, if those little details don't worry you yet, or you feel that you just want a more general understanding of how a lithium battery gets made, just keep watching. The next step is gonna be getting this thing put into the Pelican case and making it a waterproof battery. So now we have the battery built, the BMS connected, and the battery top balanced. So the next step is to get it into the Pelican case and make it waterproof and finished. When it comes to battery cables, you're gonna need two of each. So we have a positive, and it's gonna go from the most positive, and it's gonna wrap around the side and go to the back, because that's where the positive terminal for the battery is gonna be. And for the negatives, we need two sets. So one that goes from the negative to the BMS, and then another that goes from the BMS, and it's gonna wrap around the back and come around to the front side because that's where the negative terminal is gonna be on the battery box. So a trick that I do when I'm stripping for a big lug like this is I'll set the lug next to it and I'll see how far up does the cable come. And when it's at a good amount, I then just start twirling these battery uh, cable cutters, but barely tightening them. That way it's just cutting the outer insulation and not the wire inside. And I'll go until I see a little bit of shiny through the insulation. All right, that's out. So now we just put this lug on and then crush it in a hydraulic press. Now that the battery cables are all made, we're gonna cut some heat shrink. Now I've found the easiest way to cut this stuff is with some garden clippers. So you want about an inch for each one. So we're looking at four for the reds and then eight for the blacks. What you're going to do with the heat shrink is you're just going to slip it over the battery terminal and it'll just hold itself with friction for right now. Then you're going to take a heat gun and just warm it up and it'll just shrink right down and it'll just cover everything up and make it really nice. Okay, as mentioned earlier, positives are going to go here. The negatives are going to go from here to the BMS and then from the BMS to back on the other side. So we'll get the positive hooked on. Now with these cables, it's important to remember, this is this terminal. So if this rubs over this and years and years and years later, it chafes through the insulation, you have a short circuit and it will explode. Always make sure that they don't go over, they go around things. Okay, so if you notice, when I made these, one is slightly longer than the other. And the reason for that is this one has a shorter run to this, to this pole, but this one has to go down and then back up. So it's a longer run. You could equilibrate that issue by having the bottom go to the top and the top go to the bottom, but then you have to have a crossover, which is then gonna take up more space and the box is super tight. So everything lays flat and flush. So that's why that's in there. And that's what I was checking for. So the shorter one goes on the bottom because it has a smaller run to do. Okay, the next step is to hook things up to the BMS itself. So the BMS is here. This is the B minus. So this is the side that goes to the battery. And for this, we need a 10 millimeter socket. Now for fun, I'm gonna show you guys what happens when you connect the BMS to the battery. There it is. That's connected. That's disconnected. So. If you hook up the BMS to all the power leads, but you don't have it actually hooked up to the battery negative, don't worry about the numbers. They mean absolutely nothing. They're complete gibberish down there. But then when you have it hooked up, you see there's your voltages down to the thousandth. So this side is now hooked up BMS to the battery. The next side's gonna be the C minus, which I call cable side. Now, when you go to buy the BMS, it comes with a couple different options. One is the BMS like this with screw studs. So that way you can bolt on your own cables. I prefer that one. The other option is nothing. It's just this and then you solder on your own wires. 
not my favorite. Then they also have one where that comes with its own wires. Uh, that one's okay. I just prefer the bolt-on version because you can just swap it out. It's bolt-on, so you can easily unbolt it. It doesn't take any fancy tools. So if you find yourself out at sea and your BMS goes and you have a spare BMS, it's a matter of bolt it in. You don't have to then start messing with electrical connections and stuff while you're not in the mood to be messing with electrical connections and stuff. All right, we're going to finish tidying up the battery. I'm just going to get this taped on, get everything taped up so that way it's really nice, and then we'll move on to the next step. Point We have the battery built. We have Captain Tape just holding some rubber where the positive cable runs by there, just in case. we got the same situation here. we got a little rubber protecting the terminal from the negative. I have the positive and negative with some excess over here. That way they can sit and hang out when we put them in the box. And that is why the uh, ends of this are covered, because if they accidentally touch, we are short circuiting this battery and that would make a huge issue. So this is how it's all set up. Uh, you can put more captain tape on the front and stuff, but it's going to be inside the box and it's going to be covered by rubber. So you can, but you don't have to. All right. So this is set. We're going to start top balancing it now. Okay, so at this point, that battery has about three days of top balancing left to do, which means nothing can proceed for the next three days. But thankfully, I've prepared one ahead of time. So we're going to get the box ready, we'll get the battery dropped in, and we'll get everything finished up. The next step in this process is going to be to mount these terminals. Now these are going to be bedded on so that way they're waterproof, and they're going to poke out the sides of the box. So that way you can get electricity from inside the waterproof box to the rest of your boat. A little trick here. So the unit comes with all these little extra donut guys that can help pop this up and make it taller. That way you can reach it or, or for whatever mounting purposes you need. But the important part is this is an extra and it's the exact spacing and positioning for where your hole is going to go. So just put the drill through here, put this against the plastic and then drill right through it. And then your hole comes out centered and it's not gonna be too close or too far from something and everything mounts exactly where you want it to be. What you wanna keep is one plastic donut at the bottom and you're gonna have the nut and you're just gonna slip this inside. With the red one, you have the hole. You just push it in. So inside, you simply have the nut, which is gonna go on here. And then when you have your battery cable, you know, it's the washer and the nut business and all that. And that's all it is on the inside. So now you have the electricity to go from the inside out to the outside. Okay, now we're gonna start building the actual battery in the box. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fit a sheet of rubber that we cut to fit the bottom in here. This just drops in here. The rubber pad is under this. That'll keep this from sliding inside the plastic box so you can see it's stuck. It's not going anywhere. So there's the stud. We have to get these negative wires onto that and then hook it up with the uh, nut and washer and then tighten it all up. So we got some tightness to squeeze through here. Okay, that was super tight to get the negative one on, but we got it on. Now we're going to do the same on the positive. So it's the same business. Take off the captain tape, attach it to that stud, impossibly tighten the nut onto the stud, and then that's all set. So we're going to get that done and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, down in here, we had those little areas where those uh, studs were sticking out and they were kind of uh, a little too close for comfort in my opinion. So we're going to stick some more rubber in there and pretty much isolate it from the rest of the battery. So the one over here with the negative terminal, it's close to the positive wires. We don't want that shorting out. So we're just going to lay a strip of rubber down here. I'm just going to put that between the uh, positive and the negative, positive wires and the negative stud. So 
Positives are covered, negatives are covered, everything's set. The last thing to do is to cover the top of this. I was very adamant before about how important it is to have compression on these cells. And there is none right now because the lid is open. So we have a layer of rubber for the top. It's going to hold those wires back. There's no gap. So it is under pressure all the time in here. So with that, the battery is built. And since it's squished on with rubber from the top and bottom, it can't jostle, it can't slide, it can't budge. It's just, it's stuck. And one last thing that's super important to have on this is a fuse. So this is a battery terminal fuse. Here, you attach all your loads. So this becomes your battery's positive terminal. And it's got a nice little cover for it and everything's protected. And there it's set. Now with that, if anything goes wrong in here, that's going to blow. And if the BMS didn't stop it, that guy will. They're cheap, they're easy to carry, they're easy to replace, and if anything goes wrong, it protects your battery, and more importantly, it protects your boat. Okay, so that is how you build a battery in this day and age. Now, all the parts I use to build this battery are down in the description down below, right down there. Yep. And if you want me to build you a battery, shoot me an email. My email is also in the description. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What size is the battery in your boat? Is it enough? And what size of battery would you love to have in your boat? So that's... Uh, that's something I'd like to hear from everyone. So we personally have 500 amp hours in our boat at 48 volts. So that's about 2000 amp hours in 12 volt numbers. But we also power our entire electric motor off of that thing. So we need to have a lot more battery. Uh, but I'd love to know how much power do you guys need on your boat for your house loads? And if you have electric propulsion, I'd love to hear how big your battery bank is and does it give you enough range? Because we're going to be building a brand new giant battery bank for Windpuff when we get to that stage. And as always, like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, especially if they're interested in lithium batteries or cruising or sailboats or just a general curiosity of how stuff's made. It's been a pleasure making this video for you guys, and I will see you on the next project.